Hello and welcome to another utility precast training video. This is video number two in our series, and in this video we're going to be covering miters, chamfers, cuts, inserting of inserts, and inserting lifters. Let's jump right in. So here we are in the model here, back in our original model that we have. What we're going to start off by doing is extending these wing walls and uh, kind of creating the mitered ends here. So to do that, we're going to come to the edit tab and we're going to fit part end. Tecla says here on the bottom to pick part to be fitted. So we're going to select the wing wall. And then now we need to select the first point on the cutting line and then the second point on the cutting line. By selecting those two points, it extends the wall over, creating the nice mitered edge. So we can continue on. You'll notice Tecla leaves this cursor, um, leaves the command active after each time you do the commands. You don't need to reinitiate the command every time the command stays active. And finally, on the last one. Okay, now that we've got those in, uh, let's cover some basic chamfer. So how, how to create a chamfer. So if we go, if we stay in our edit tab here, uh, we have a chamfered edge tool. Let me just show how this works here on one of our wing wall edges, maybe on this edge here or something. Just to showcase, uh, so you single click on your chamfer edge, pick the object. So if we wanted to chamfer this slab, and then you basically select a point, and then an end point, and then it creates your chamfer in there for you. Creates it along your edge. You can double click on your chamfer, and then you can change the parameters. So if you only had a half inch chamfer, um, you could just type in one half, come here, change this to one half, and then modify, and you notice your chamfer is there. So chamfers can be applied likewise in the vertical direction. So we can apply chamfer from here through there. And that's really how easy applying chamfers are. You can apply these to your profile shapes as well. So if these culverts, for instance, on this interior, uh, interior of your culvert, come here to edit, chamfer edge, select your culvert, and then you can grab this edge to this edge, and we can create the chamfer on the culvert. So that's really how easy culverts are, or sorry, how easy chamfers are. Uh, next, we're going to angle cut our wing walls. So typically these wing walls will um, kind of be sliced down and then they kind of protrude like that. So to do so, uh, what we're gonna do is we're going to create a view of these. Tecla has a really nice feature um, of kind of creating those standard CAD-like views. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set our selection filter to the select assemblies. You'll notice when you have the assemblies on, uh, a blue border will highlight around your assembly. This is, becomes more um, important later on when you start having inserts and rebar and uh, different components kind of, kind of nested in to these um, different pieces, but for now, we're just going to select on the wall, right click, create view, and default views. What this is going to do is this is going to open up. As soon as this opens here, click this uh, restore down button. And this will create these four views here. You may have to do a, um, a control four in these views to kind of get that solid uh, look. But what you can do is minimize this back view, and then you can tile your views so that way they fill up your whole screen here and basically what we're going to do is any of these views you can rotate them around at any given time um, but basically what we're going to do is we're going to kind of note where our miter is at so our miter is on this end so we know that we're going to want to angle cut down and then through so what we could do is draw a construction line let's say that you're going to have a three foot vertical uh, kind of leg on here I'm just going to do a control two to get a see-through view. And uh, I just drew some kind of establishing line horizontally. It doesn't matter how long. And you will see why right here. So I'm going to come to my edit command and I'm just going to do a line cut, select on my piece. And then however far over this cut is supposed to go, I'm just going to randomly select a point here and then Click on my endpoint, and then now what Tecla is asking us, pick side to remove. So now we want to remove this side up here. And just like that, we can see from our ISO view, we've sliced off that edge. 
if I just back up real quick, uh, also what you, you could have done if you, if you need to have this cut at a certain point up here, you can just draw another construction line. Let's say you need it, you know, six foot six over. You draw on that six foot six. I like to establish a, a vertical line there just so I can see that ending a little more clear. And then now same thing, edit, line cut, select your piece, come to that known endpoint, come to this known endpoint, and then pick side to remove. So just like that. It's also nice to point out here that Tecla, when Tecla creates these views, all these views are parametric. So, you know, as you're doing uh, something in one view, you'll notice how my cut and whatnot is highlighted in these other views. You could start a command in this view, finish it in an ISO view here. All these commands are all, or all these views are, are fully linked together. So now with that done, we're basically going to repeat that for our other wing walls here. So I'm going to speed this up a little bit as we go through here, create views, default views. And since I'm only really interested in this view, I'm just going to blow this, this view up here. Come to my construction line, three feet up. So I'm establishing point over. I can go here, six foot six. So I'm establishing point down. Edit, line cut, select your piece, start point, end point, remove. Just like that, minimize your views. Now in Tecla, you can only have nine of these open. So you'll notice as you do this, uh, you, you will have to close some of those out, but just keep that in mind. So Tecla has um, kind of some built-in functionalities that you can come off of a point. So instead of drawing those construction lines on every single piece, Tecla has a faster way for um, kind of the more advanced users as you're going through. But I can single click on my piece. Now Tecla saying pick first point on cutting line. I can hold uh, control on my keyboard and I can come off of this point. So I'm gonna come off my six foot six. Now I've started from here and then I'm gonna come, I'm gonna hold control left click, pull my cursor up to that three foot line. And now I've came off of this point up and now I can pick side to remove. So just like that, you can do the same thing without using construction lines by holding down that control and using that to, to reference to come off of a certain point. So now we have all of our wing walls, more or less geometry wise detailed out. We discussed our chamfers, we've got our line cuts in there. Now what we can do is create keyway. Sometimes these wing walls will tie into other cast and place slabs. It's also good to know how to create these small little keyway joints too. Sometimes you have you know, double or triple barrel culvert runs that you need keyways throughout them where they're tying everything together. Um, we'll just run through one example here of, of how to draw in a keyway. So I'm just going to click on this first piece and create view default views. So what we're going to do is we're going to create, um, I'm going to use some construction lines here, and we're going to create a nice little keyway down here at the bottom of this section here. So if I want to start the keyway maybe five inches from the bottom, and let's say it's going to be a three-quarter inch deep keyway. There it is. And then now if I want my keyway to be five inches deep, and then straight over. So this would essentially get us a rectangular keyway, but odds are it is somewhat, uh, has a taper to it of some kind. So I'm just gonna put like a half inch taper. So I'm gonna come up a half of an inch, draw on a construction line. I'm gonna go down a half of an inch and then draw on that taper line. And then now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come to the edit polygon cut, single click on our wing wall and then now that we have these construction lines, we're just essentially tracing here. Just tracing this out. Once you get to the last piece here, you can middle mouse, and you'll see that we have a keyway cut all through the bottom. So that is how you'll, you'll notice that with the polygon cut, it's gonna cut through your entire piece. Now with these cuts, if you single click on your cut and you open up your property cog over here, you'll notice that the profile of this piece is the length of the piece. So if you only wanted your keyway to extend a certain distance, you could change it here. So let's say we only wanted this keyway to be 100 inches. I could type in 100, press enter, and you see now we just have a segmented 100 inch keyway. 
Now, likewise, if you don't know exactly what the distance is, you could type something you know, longer in there to kind of cover your, your entire piece. But so that is how you change the uh, kind of the lengths of those pi cuts. I'm going to come back to this end view. Now over here on the, uh, the side, we have our applications and components. Now there is a, a fair amount of tools in here that come out of the box. These precast detailing tools all come standard out of the box. We do have the Tecmo warehouse where you can download um, other items as well. Um, so I went to the Tecmo warehouse and found some of these uh, ferrule inserts, coil inserts. So I'm just gonna click on one of these and drop it in. And now what's important to note here is this wall is angled. So this, these pieces are gonna show up angled here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop these in in unknown view like this guy. So that way we can drop them in straight. So from my top view, I can locate these. Now this is obviously not in the right vertical plane. So we can just click on it we should have these single points here if you're on your component switch. We can move special linear from this yellow point to the center of our keyway. Now we just want to move it in the Z for right now. We just want to get it in the right plane. So now we're in the right plane. We can go, let's jump back to this end view. Now you notice it's sticking a little bit in the keyway here, so we can just do a traditional move, right click move, just move it back to half of an inch. So now it's located right in that view. We can probably go back to our top view and let's just push it a little bit away from the wall. Right now we're only about two inches away from the wall, so let's push it another six inches or so. And then we're gonna do a copy special linear and I'm gonna say from like this point, I'm gonna do like 12 inches on center. But why I did that is because we're going at an angle here. So you'll notice it filled in the X and the Y planes for us. So I'm just gonna guess here, maybe about uh, 18 of these or so. And if I press copy, all these popped in. Let's do another one over here. There we go. So cancel out of there. If I go back to now my 3D view, you notice now we have all these ferrule or coil inserts casted into the keyway. Again, these came from the Tecla warehouse. Um, you can also reach out to your local manufacturer. Odds are they have a model of them. You can insert those shapes directly into the model. For more help on that, feel free to visit the Tecla user assistance on how to insert 3D objects. But for now, we're gonna move on uh, to adding these pieces together. So right now, you'll notice from when I selected the assembly, how the slab did not come with it. Now, different precasters do different things. Some will cast this monolithically. Some will have a secondary pour. Um, I suppose you could even cast them both individually and connect them on site. So there's lots of different possibilities here. So if these were um, kind of separate items, you would leave them just how we have them right now. This piece is gonna get its own mark, its own drawing. Then your slab is gonna get its own mark, its own drawing. That would be keeping them separate. The second option that you could do is if this was going to be a, a secondary pour, you would want to attach this to the cast unit here. So first single select on the slab, right click, and then cast unit, add to. And it's tech was gonna ask you which, which piece you select on this piece. Now you'll notice it turns like this pinkest purple. That kind of lets you know that it's been added. And then another check is you can select your assembly switch. And then you'll notice how now you have a bounding box over your entire object here. So now this is added as a secondary pour. Note that you can still see the line work here that will be from the secondary pour. The other option, which I'll showcase over here, is our added material. So if you come to the edit tab, and then you select added material, attached to part. This is gonna be the third option, and this is if they're cast monolithically. So select the part to attach to. We're gonna select our wing wall, and then you're gonna select your slab, and then you're gonna middle mouse. Now in doing that, you'll notice that now this whole piece is one object, 
and it's combined these pieces together. So now this is all one single pour. You lose out on, the, on your joint line work and whatnot through here. This is all just one solid object. Okay, that moves us on to adding lifters. Um, so when it comes to lifters, kind of same thing goes for the coil inserts. Then we have a number of different options that you can select from um, that's come standard out of the box here. We have, um, these are the, the four that come out of the box for lifting, but we also have a bunch for you know different embeds, different assemblies, different angles, anchor bolts, and so on. If you don't find what you need in here, you can, uh, like I said earlier, you can go to the warehouse and look for your manufacturers through the warehouse. But what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna show an example of how to model in a eight ton lifter plate. So uh, we're gonna use in uh, the lifting component here, we're gonna use this TPA section as kind of a starting point. So to insert this, you single click on it and Tecla is telling you down in the bottom here to pick a position. So I'm gonna select my position and then just hold down. I just chose any random grid here just to get the, the uh, lifter in. So now you notice we have our lifter in, but typically these have uh, number four bars kind of horizontal in both directions. So what we need to do is we need to add those bars. So come to the concrete tab, rebar and bar. Tecla says pick part to reinforce. We're gonna select our plate. Now I'm just going to uh, pick this top corner here just as kind of a known starting point. And then I'm gonna hold my cursor to the right. Um, I'm gonna make sure that it's um, orthogonal here. You can see this um, orthogonal perpendicular square here letting me know that I'm going perpendicular. I'm gonna type 18 inches into my keyboard and press enter. A straight line will obviously shoot over in the 18 inches. And now Tecla is saying to pick polygon position. So if you had some kind of vent bar or an L bar or U bar, you would you know, essentially just draw that shape out. But since we're just drawing a straight bar, I'm just gonna end it here in middle mouse. Now, what you may see, if you come to your settings cog over here, by default, Tecla is gonna try to assume that this bar needs some cover on the ends. So you can just come here and change your your covers and your on plane and off plane, all to zero here for now. So right now our bar is protruding with our plate. So we just need to come single click on your bar and then right click, move special linear and clear out anything that was there from before. And I'm just gonna lift this bar up a quarter of an inch. So now it's flush with the plate. Looking at my axes over here, I can see that my Y is positive in this direction. So I'm gonna come to my Y and I'm just gonna kick it over till it's on the plate. If you had a certain distance, again, you could draw a construction line, but for, for right now, I'm just kind of placing it there. And then I'm gonna clear this out and then now I'm gonna center it on the plate. So I cleared it out, I can click pick. I'm gonna click the center of my bar to the center of my plate. Now in this orientation, I'm moving it in my X axis, as you can see down here from your UCS. Now in the X, I can just untick the Y and the Z boxes here and click move. This will only move the bar in whatever box I have uh, checked there. So with this bar in, I can now copy it over. So if you knew the distance you wanted to copy it over, you could copy it over. You could copy mirror. There's tons of different options you could do. I'll maybe showcase the copy mirror. So if I clear this out, click on a bottom point, and then come around here, click on the bottom point, and type in my angle, 180. There's the copy mirror. And then now what we need to do is we need to place our other two bars in the other axes. So single click on one bar, hold control, single click on the other bar. This allows us to select mul multiple objects within Tecla. Right click, copy special, rotate. Clear out anything that was there from the previous command. And now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna find the center point of this assembly here, which is right here, this green uh, triangle. And I'm just gonna rotate this about the Z. What we do is 90. So with those rotated 90, you'll notice that now they are protruding through the other bars. Right click, interrupt. Uh, single click on this bar, single click on this bar, 
and then right click move special linear. Now we know that these are number four bars, so we can just move them up half of an inch in the Z direction. Oh, and it looks like I did that wrong because it's from the center here, so I just need to move it. Oh no, I just I typed in a quarter, that's why. So there we go. So quarter, quarter, I just did it twice, um, is up. And I think we're looking good. If it looks like maybe this plate is clashing a little bit here, so we can just move it in the X direction, move it like a quarter of an inch to push it away. And now this one, we can move it a negative quarter of an inch to push it away. So now that you have this plate drawn, you're gonna obviously copy these throughout all of your culverts. Now you don't wanna do this process every single time for every single plate. That would become quite cumbersome and would take obviously a lot of time. So now that we've done this one time, um, what we can do is we can create a custom part of this so that way you never have to do this again. And you can even save these for future projects as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here to our components. We're gonna click this uh, hamburger button here and we're going to define custom component. We're gonna choose a part and we're gonna name this. So I'm gonna call this my eight ton plate. You can give it a description if you want to try to find it easier from this list. Now, Teclo says, you know, in the model, select the object that will form this custom component. I'm going to draw a big window around all these objects. Press next. Now it says in the model, select one or two part positions. So this is where you can select if you want to drop it in with a single point, which is what I'm going to choose. So I'm just going to select this kind of top point here. Let me actually go to a plan view and then I'm going to select right here on the center. Now I'm, I'm just going to do from a single point. If you wanted to do a double point, you could click then a direction here. So this next point that I select will be a direction. But if you don't select anything at all, you can just press finish. And then now you'll notice that as you highlight over this thing with your, this is kind of the white Christmas tree here. When you single select on this, it clicks on everything. And if you double click on it, now you've brought up this component. Now this component now lives in your components here. So if I just scroll down, you can see eight ton plate or you can search for it at the top, eight T. Now you can single click on here and then single click in the model. And then now you can just drop these plates in. So now just like that, this is now saved away custom component. What's also very important to kind of know and understand about these components is if you were if you wanted to change something, like let's say now these needed to be, you know, number three bars or number five bars or increase in length, you could just edit this custom component and then all of these would change in your model. So it's uh, it's good to know that so that way you don't edit this and then, you know, not want to change something or vice versa there. Just know that once you edit this component, it, it changes everywhere within that model. So with these uh, kind of created here, we can just delete these out of the way. And I'll just kind of show really quickly how to drop these in. So I would just drop it into kind of a known location here. So now that we have the, the plate here, we just kind of need to move it into position. So uh, the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to attach this piece to this item. So I'm going to say assembly, add as a subassembly, and then select my culvert. Now what that basically does is that lets Tecla know that this piece is associated with this culvert. And why that's important is you need to do that for them to show up on your drawings, the bill of materials, everything like that is basically controlled from these assemblies. So with now my blue assembly switch, I can just single click on this culvert and I can create view default views. And then now I've done correctly, you should see this uh, lifter show up within your view here. So I'm just going to come here to one of my views and I'm just going to position this lifter appropriately. So I'm gonna say that, I'm just gonna move it. Let's say we've got a 15 foot culvert. I'm just gonna say three foot on this side. And then now I'm gonna copy one to this corner. And then I'm gonna right click, move it. Three foot on this side. So now we've essentially got two lifters right there. I'm gonna to come to my top view so now, as you can see, we've got our lifter here and lifter here. If you needed, uh, like let's say you needed four, four lifters, you could hold control, click on both of them, 
copy special, clear these out. And if you wanted to go in the X direction, maybe space them out, uh, I don't know, two and a half feet. Say copy. And then now with all of these selected, you could move special linear. And what's nice about the move special linear too is if you just want to move them over you know, a certain distance without pinpointing it with construction lines, you can just type in um, a distance here, like a small distance, and then just kind of shift them around kind of inch by inch there. So I typed in a negative because as you can see from my UCS, positive is this way. I wanted to shift them back the other way. And that's basically how you insert lifters. The only other thing that I wanted to showcase in this video was how to insert um, a slightly different lifter. We have this lifting anchor, which if I drop it in right here, I can show you. I already created a custom component of this. So we have a lifter that looks something like this. We, we're going to place basically two of these on the sides here. So just to showcase this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, as you can see, it's in the wrong plane here. We want it to basically roll over 90 degrees. So I'm going to come here and move special rotate. And I need to do about a line. So I'm going to clear this out and I'm going to do about a line. And I'm going to choose my culvert edge as my line to rotate about. And then I'm going to do 90 degrees. And then one more flip. There we go. So now my lifter is in the right plane, but now it's just not in the right spot here. So I'm going to move it. So this point is at the middle of my culvert. So I can just look for this triangle. And there it is. Now you could switch to another view. And you could switch to this end view if you wanted to just move it straight up and down. I'm just going to continue to work in this ISO view. So you could move special linear, and then in the Z, let's maybe move it, uh, let's see, negative 24 inches down in the Z. So now it's there, and then we could do a copy special linear in the Z. Let's maybe move it negative 48 inches, one copy. So just like that, we have these lifters. Looks like we, here, let's move this one down more. Let's maybe move it six feet. And then it looks like we're protruding out just a little bit. So to fix that, we're gonna do our move special linear. We're gonna clear this out. We're gonna select any of these edges, any of this edge, it doesn't really matter. And then we're gonna select the edge of our culvert. Now, once this populates, we're gonna look at our UCS here we only want to move it, we only want to shift it back in the Y. So we're just going to uncheck the Z, uncheck the X, and just shift it back in the Y. And there you go. That's how you insert lifters. So I think that's going to conclude for video two. Stay tuned for video three. Thank you.